We're getting ready to dive on this first vehicle. What's happening, y'all? It's Trey, Dark Divers. Got Ronnie, Brothers on Water Recovery, way over there getting the boat set up. So we are off the Clarks River, which leads into the Tennessee River, just outside of Paducah, Kentucky. We got word from one of Ronnie's friends that he's helped out before in the past that there's a vehicle in the water, and I believe it's Route 60, the bridge that goes over to the Tennessee River. If it's not, I'll have the correction when we get there. But a little bit cold today, we've got an early start. Give us plenty of time to get it marked, and I'll let you know what we get or what we find. So I'll see you all on the boat. So we made it on the boat. Do a little bit of scanning before we hit the Tennessee River, just to clear this boat ramp, and then we will be on our way. What's the water temperature? Water temperature is 49 degrees. Hey, it warmed up. <laughs> a little bit. Got a good shadow. As Ronnie and I arrive and set the boat in the water on Clark's River, we begin to scan the waterway and boat ramp area, making sure the waterway is clear of any vehicles or yeah, anything else there. that needs scanned and dove on. We then moved on towards the Tennessee River. That direction is Ohio. We want to go up river. Yeah. Look at all the fish. So we made it to our destination, and uh, it did show a forecast of zero percent rain. There's even a rain spot on the cleanse. It started raining, <laughs> so we didn't make it. This is this highway six here. So we're already at the Highway 60 bridge or the Tennessee River. The bottom pretty, look, did look pretty smooth and clean. So as soon as we figure out if there's a vehicle over here or not, I'm gonna come back. And you can see the rain. So that came out of nowhere because it didn't rain the whole time coming here. Three knots right now. So we scanned a good, just a little decent ways. From over here to the other side of the bank, so far, I mean, the bottom that we're getting, we haven't seen anything, so. Ronnie and I proceeded from the Highway 60 bridge over the Tennessee River after ensuring the area was clear and finding no signs of any vehicles in the water. We then made our way towards the Paducah, Kentucky boardwalk along the Ohio River. We have moved locations down by Paducah. So all this area needs scanned well out past that so this is the Paducah boardwalk I believe yeah we scanned it once but with different equipment yeah we'll just leave it at that so 12 foot so before the camera goes dead down here at Paducah like I said doing some due diligence rescanning it and so far I mean it looks pretty clear so between the rain and the weather despite the barges being over there we haven't had to experience the wake yet so we have gotten a good scan so we just want to make sure this is clear and then move on ronnie and i utilized new technology to clear the paducah kentucky boardwalk along the ohio river confirming that the area was clear of any vehicles except for the discovery of a boat with this confirmation we decided it was time to relocate to another area are clear i'm sorry for the footage this gopro is just not doing very good in this cold weather so 
thank you for bearing with it. We are moving down, I think it's to uh, Smithland, I believe, Kentucky. Going to the Cumberland River and the Ohio, and then we're gonna put in there the Ohio and Cumberland, and move on down to the Cumberland. There's a road, it's a long road, it goes straight into the water. So we shall see what we can find today. Thank you all for tagging along. get out of here hopefully oh man bumpy bumpy uh oh shoot kind of dangerous I don't like it I don't like it at all it's a lot of weight See you at the spot. So I just want to say thank you for uh, sticking with us. It's 46 degrees out. Uh, I don't know if my glasses are there. But we've got a lot of searches to do. Ronnie and I did our due diligence. Um, the areas that you've seen, he has searched and I have searched. Not together. This is the first time searching these areas together just with different equipment. So he's got his Humminbird. I forgot what it, which one exactly what model it is. And then I've got my Garmin, totally two different units, but they're both getting great images compared to what we used to get with our old equipment. So we're just doing our due diligence um, and researching those areas to make sure that they are actually clear. Love you all very much. And we'll see you at the next spot. All right, y'all, so we are in Smithland, Kentucky on the second part of this search. You got a roadway up there and it goes right off into the Ohio River. It's got about three boat ramps. And you got the Cumberland there. You got Ronnie over here. Well, it's got two boat ramps and I made a third one. That way we don't got. <laughs> that way we're not on that one and yep. holding it up. So I am on the GoPro 7. So if I'm not in frame, that's why. I'm gonna see if this works any better than using the tin or my phone. So, you know, this looks very calm, which it is but the current is moving. Hopefully you can tell. But we're gonna do a little search here. This scared, I mean, this kind of scared me because it came coming in, if you weren't paying attention, yeah, it it's just a straight, straight drop. Yeah, it comes straight off there, you'll launch. And there's oh. no guard whatsoever, so. And then Rex is driving. Are you warm? He's laughing. <laughs> he's like, he's like, <laughs> And he's like, he says, you can have, up? have you the cold. I got the heat. Yeah. You ain't taking me? What's going on? So no, he's he's kind of cold. So the he's second shivering. spot. Oh, he is. Yeah, but he's not, he's not really cold, but I'm going to leave him in there for this one. You're going to warm up, Bubba. He'll be mad, but. At least he'll be warm. Yeah. So we're going to get to it. On. That road comes right in over there. Scan that direction. And then we'll head back. Get both those boat ramps. That's a general area. I'm not gonna do a whole lot of recording just because I want to try to paint a picture without the camera dying. This is what we got. And it's showing 10 foot deep. After clearing the area, Ronnie and I decided to move on to the Vicksburg boat ramp, which determined to be 
a long, windy road. So we're going to the Vicksburg boat ramp, we're right three miles away. We're in the hills and the hollers, and there's the map right there. So it's a good little trek, windy little trek, too. So, look kind of promising. see y'all when we get there we made it to the vicksburg boat ramp this road just keeps whining and whining no signs no rumble strips no nothing and whoop, right into the cumberland ah right, we're gonna do a pass on this uh boat ramp here pretty steep boat ramp yeah it is that is a car bro there. Look at the shadow. Yeah, you can see the 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 hump. Yep, that is a car. <laughs> Guess who's diving? <laughs> Cold water divers. I forgot my dive gear. I've got extra gear, but there's no inflator hose. There's not an extra inflator hose. Yeah, so. I can't so. Dive. Uh, this hey, Rexy. Hey baby. Due to camera issues, we have now marked two vehicles with two different magnets and buoys. And we now begin to dive on the first vehicle. It's a Nissan. Huh? It's a Nissan. I think. Nissan? Not 100% sure. It just feels it in so bad. Is it? I, I'm pretty sure I've never hit the trunk because I had the Nissan logo. 
I dug and dug and dug. I couldn't get to the plate. It is supposed to tilt it in. Like tilt it in. After diving the first vehicle and struggling with the current, it was determined that the vehicle was a Nissan and heavily silted in. It was time to dive on the second vehicle. Go, go. Diving off the boat, into the water, I grabbed the line, making my way down to the bottom of the Cumberland River. With every breath, I could feel the current breathing heavier and heavier, feeling overwhelmed and working hard to breathe. I grabbed the line hand by hand, pulling my way down to the bottom to reach the vehicle. Finally landing on the vehicle, I began my way down, back away from the current. I found my way to the driver's side pillar and work my way to the back of the vehicle. As I felt my way around the vehicle, I found my way to the back rear trunk. Navigating the current, no visibility to my way to where the license plate should be. We're on the vehicle. I repeat. We are on I found myself vehicle. on the rear of the we vehicle. I eventually found the license plate, pulled out my knife, and began to pry away at the license plate. In the middle of this, I could vaguely see what looked to be, or looked to appear to be, a Mazda emblem on the rear trunk, just above the license plate. As you can see in the video, it's a Mazda, with a Kentucky license plate. Each breath became heavier and heavier as I became overwhelmed from the working load and fighting against the current to stay in place on the vehicle. I pried and pried with my dive knife to pull the plate from the vehicle. Gonna get it, baby. Come on, baby. The more I tried, the more I had to pry and pry to try to get the plate off of the Mazda. I will say this will be the most air that I've ever consumed in this. I will say this will be the most air that I have consumed in this short period of time. Fighting against the current, fighting to pry the plate off of the Mazda, began to begin a task in itself. I breathed heavier and heavier, using more air than I ever have used before. But I was determined to get the license plate off the vehicle and bring it to the surface. Because with this evidence and this information, it could mean the difference between having the vehicle pulled or leaving the vehicle in the river for a later date. Normally I can control my breathing, but the fight against the current was constant and it never let up.
with every breath, as you can hear, I ended up having 1500 PSI of air. Which is the most air that I have ever used on this short of a dive. The current was challenging, but I was persistent in removing the plate from the vehicle. With the full face missing parts, me being overwhelmed, I still managed to get the plate off of the vehicle and begin my way back towards the driver's side. And then I was blown off the vehicle. Finally reaching the surface, I had exhaled all that I could so that I don't have an air embolism. What up y'all? So I'm above the water. We dove on two vehicles. First one, I believe is a Nissan. The second one, I believe is a Mazda. We did get a license plate off of it. Yep, Trey's the man, he dove both of them. Worst, I can't say the worst, but I don't know if the second one was worse. I think the second was one was tired. worse. It took you longer to get it down. Took, it took a minute. And then I just kept pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling. Those magnets worked out great because I had to pull. Like more than I ever do. Oh yeah, a good magnet. So they, both of them stayed on great. So We need to get a couple more. We need more because the way our luck's been running, <laughs> we need about, we need a couple more yeah. for sure. Some rope. But you got the plate. Yep. So we actually got the plate off the second one. Kentucky 687 Edward Lincoln Henry, McCracken County. Ironically, there's a sticker on there from Paducah, Paducah, yeah. Kentucky. And then expired 10 of, is it 10? Ain't McCracken, uh, Paducah? Yeah. Oh, I just thought go. it was weird they put the Paducah on the plate. <laughs> but I think it's 10 October 2003. Yep. So Kentucky. Yeah, I, I had to work to get this off and then I lost another dive knife so yeah I'm gonna have to you, you're gonna have to get like one of the wristband things to put your knife yeah, on and keep, keep it keep there losing them. it's just a, luckily I got I was just that of the plate and then I was looking for the line I got blown off the car that was fun well, I, yep. can't, I can't say it was fun, but I was like, you know, you got to make a decision. You're either going to try to work up towards the current because that's where the, the magnets was, which I could not make my, between holding the plate and trying to fumble the knife and then work my way along the side of the car. That one's definitely pullable if the... Is the windows up, down? Some of them are down, for sure. Some of them are down? Yeah. Because I, I could feel when I was pulling, you could grab pillar and then grab them along the bottom of the, uh, well, the door. But the more you try to work your way back up river, it just wasn't working out too good. But between Ronnie operating the boat, the magnets, we got both our magnets back. Yeah, because uh, getting all my stuff together at four o'clock this morning, I've run off and left my whole box of dive gear. Honestly, I don't know how we would have done it. Because we'd have been, we both would have got blown out. Yeah. And then <laughs> the Nobody, boat, you, we'd had to walk back. The boat would have been sitting there anchored or something. Yeah. And then we would have, so we got to have. You would have had to have a boat person, yeah. but, you know, it, it ain't safe diving by yourself. And we do it as safe as we possibly you know, can. But, if I thought it was too much, we wouldn't have dove it. No. So we always do everything as safe as we possibly can. That's why Ronnie was on the boat, man in the boat, and he was, was out of the way, kept an eye on me. And as soon as I said, hey, so when I got blown off the car, I was like getting his attention, came right to me. I was in the boat within a matter of seconds. Yep. So we were waiting on the sheriff's office to come out and hopefully they'll be open enough to let us know if it's a stolen vehicle, if it comes back to anything. That's that's what we would like to well, find out. I mean, he ran it Yeah. and then, then he's like, I'm going to send a sheriff or send yeah. a deputy out there. So hopefully it's. It could be something. Because previously in the video, I'm not for sure how much I got out of it because of the camera issues. But this roadway 
kind of winds and it's a straight shot all like the way down a quarter, quarter of a mile or half a mile up over that hill right there because the, straight down into there the other vehicle is like right out there but this one I mean, it's a good pretty good ways yeah it's like 200 yards down so they probably had more momentum and the plates in my opinion the plate's still on it this one i'm not 100 i don't think i'm pretty sure the plate's not on this one but it seems like the majority of the time we find vehicles that are dumped, the plates are off of. Yeah. So whenever we do find a plate on a vehicle, it's kind of raises the the mark that it could be something. Right. Not always. And, and we but, also found out that yeah, and then there's a roadway. the river over there, there's another road that runs over there. Yep, because we had an audience. <laughs> For this being in the middle of nowhere, people started showing up. Yeah, we had a lot of fans come out. So the weather warmed up. Or new fans. New fans. Yep. The, the weather warmed up like i'm warm now uh, dry suits full of water <laughs> yeah but just working it one day at a time um definitely going to be searching and scanning these areas together got a lot of uh a lot of cases and a lot yep. of area um i'm just going to throw this in here i think the more sonars on the water the better oh absolutely because there's so always better there's so much ground and waterways to cover i mean the just the u.s alone is huge so we just want to bring clean up the environment and the more vehicles that we find hopefully we can bring Help home families. some missing I mean, that, you know missing loved that's ones that's why we're out here doing this guys so, helping families you know cleaning up the environment yep at the same time this one has a nice fishing lure on it yeah <laughs> so there's rexy or rex he's been having a good time but as soon as the police get here we'll give you an update and hopefully we get a a little backstory on this one yeah hopefully so hopefully he'll tell us something love you all very much and we'll see y'all in a little bit so see right there where the current is yeah there's one right there it don't have a license plate in it it's silted in pretty good how, how, like how many feet off i'm like um, probably looking at 15 20 yards okay and then the other one's about 200 yards down do you get in Kentucky? Is it how do you guys attack or the expiration date usually put on there? Is it like the month first and then the year or the year? The big number's the month. Oh, the big number's the month? Yeah. Is that the, like back here? Yeah, but yeah. it's uh, the third month of 2010. Yeah. That's the month. Oh, okay. March, oh. March of 2010. Oh, see, so I'm not, an idiot. No, you're not an idiot. We didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know Kentucky. So. so 2010. Could be a Mazda RX-8 or something. Good. Or 7. 2003, the plates actually looked a lot different. Uh, yeah, I don't think they were like this. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, I didn't know that. I was thinking it was a lot older. No, I got to the and, uh, unless the front one was yeah. silted in. It's it's really silted in the first one is, and as far as I could tell, it felt like the trunk. I mean, you can't see anything when you're down there for the most part, and then you can see what looked like a Nissan emblem, like the tiny one. On the one down there. The one here. The one here. Yeah. Nissan, I I believe so. So it looked like a six one eight. Yeah, I got to the part of the trunk and felt like a trunk and you know like the indentation and there was no plate As far as I could feel like you between the current and then trying to move around the silt. It's really hard to tell What do you think so Yeah. Okay. You get. We'll try to figure out. Coordinate. Was the windows up or down on that? There was down on like at least one window. At least on the driver's side, it's down. I couldn't tell you if it's the drivers or the passengers in the rear on the second one. If that makes sense. The current was moving, so I got blown off the second car after I got the plate. I tried to work my you way got back. Anything tied to this one? Or no. Anything, or it's just, you know, it's not now. Yeah.
Now we had to take our buoy and magnet off of this one to get it on that one because we put the buoy on that one and it went under the water. So you ain't got nothing to file for that. We got them back. Yeah. I mean, I can magnet it for you. Yeah, if you want to magnet it. Yeah, if you want us to mark it, we can mark it. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Sounds good. getting their stuff ready to rock and roll they're gonna dive on the first vehicle that we dove on and see if they can find out some more information on her so sit back and relax hopefully it doesn't get too dark which I'm sure it will be but we'll update you either way All right, y'all, so Ronnie and me, we're uh, packed up almost. Everybody's gone. So the Livingston, is the Livingston Fire Department? The Livingston County? Livingston County Fire Department, and emergency, EMA, emergency management, the, the sheriff's office. Sheriff's office. They had a tow truck deputies. out here. But yeah, what? They had a tow truck out here, didn't they? No, they canceled it. Okay. So they canceled the tow truck. So apparently they opened up the floodgates or something and it made the current worse than what it was and uh floodgates. so they opened up the floodgates on them and i guess when we were diving it there was like two floodgates open. two floodgates and they opened two more they opened up two more so they said it was just ripping and it's you know the car being in there as long as it has it's not you know worth the the risk of yeah, something it's happening. not worth the risk of losing somebody so what they're gonna the do is they're eventually gonna get okay let's say four days or something maybe yeah, they're gonna they're gonna come back out in about four days, assess everything, and possibly pull it then. Yeah, and then hopefully get the floodgates shut off. Yeah. So that way the current's not ripping like it was. So. And then they're gonna get a hold of us and, and let, us, let know. us know what what the deal is with the vehicle. So. So either way, we should have a backstory. It's been a great day. It's been a pretty good day. Definitely hard getting down or whatever, but we did it. We got the license plate. Hey, I got an idea. I got a spotlight on my head. Yeah. <laughs> I got an idea. Ding, I was like, what's ding, the ding. idea? <laughs> the thing's bright. Yeah. But hopefully you can hear us over the generator. We love you all very much. Until uh, we're back out here or back somewhere else searching, clearing these areas. See you all in the water. So I'm just going to add this to the end. If you made it this far, thank you very much for watching both of us putting up with me. As you could probably tell in the video, the full face needs serviced. Yeah. The dry suit is flooded out. Whatever happened in the last dive, it's completely flooded. I do need donations um, just to be able to, the tanks are out of biz. The majority of them are hydroed. There's a lot of gear and upkeep that needs done so we can do this safely. So the full face is actually missing parts, so I'll just be honest. And uh, if you could, do, I mean, a dollar's a dollar and every bit helps. So I don't mind if I could put some of my money towards getting the gear serviced and maintenance. That would help a lot, but if y'all could, I'll have a link below. So, and if you want to donate a different way than what, than the, the other than the link that I have down below, just get a hold of me and we can work something out. So, I appreciate each and every one of you. Until next time, we'll see y'all in the water. Until next time, stick with us, guys. See y'all. If you can, help him out a little bit. Yeah. Thank you, guys.